So about a week ago on ESPN Wisconsin's radio show, Wildy and Tausch, they had David Bottiari on, and he went into more detail on what was going down between him and the Packers and his entire injury situation this past season. And so I want to share a few different clips from this interview. I will leave the full interview down below in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. But I'm going to show a few clips that I think are pretty interesting regarding what was happening. Of course, Bacciari has been released and is no longer with the Green Bay Packers after his 11 seasons here. But here we have the first clip. Um, Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, saw the writing on the wall, saw the uh, nonverbal uh, actions displayed to me, you know, when I uh, decided to put my health first and uh, needed to get the surgery. Once we kind of found out this is the problem, I mean, it's it's not ideal. I, uh, you know, if we had to do it again, obviously probably would have done this in the first bat, probably would have saved us two years of uh, trying to uh, work around something. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's always, it's always bittersweet. It sucks. I got so much love and uh, appreciation for Green Bay and everything it did for me in 11 years. And um, my guy said, you know, a couple other – turns that I've done on radio that I'm just uh I'm grateful that uh I didn't make the decision easy on them and that uh, it took them 11 years because I, I knew eventually they're they're gonna cut me that's why they you know they're eventually gonna cut Mark I mean they're either that's why they'll cut everybody at the end of the day or they'll move on from them I'm just glad it took them 11 years for me um I, I'm gonna ask you the tough follow-up though because you know that's what I do um you said the non-verbal part of this did you get the sense that they were pissed about the way last season went and the fact that they got one game out of you before you realized that your knee was not functioning properly? Uh, no, I mean, like, everyone understood. It was just like, uh, I don't think they understood, like, the magnitude. And I think uh, some information probably was displayed uh, not properly, so I think it was more of a miscommunication. But I don't think anyone understands, you know, the, the magnitude of the surgery that I had and the fact I was non-weight-bearing for eight weeks. And then, you know, just kind of coming back and kind of not really – it's like being welcome but not at the same time is the best way to describe it. And then I'm like, well, okay, and this, this guy, I, I kind of I, – I, I'm, I'm understanding, you know, I guess my, my girlfriend moved on. Okay, that's fine. But, like, it's, it, I, you know, I'm an adult. We can have a conversation about it. So it sounds like there was – he said there was some kind of miscommunication when it came to the – I guess the severity of his surgery and what was going to be – or what, what happened after that. I'm not sure where the miscommunication was. Was that between his doctors and the coaches? Or I don't know where the miscommunication was, but it seems like something was off between Batiari and maybe the coaching staff and sort of their expectations of you know what Batiari was potentially going through. And so I thought that was interesting. And then here's another part where he talks about what he would have done differently. Uh, David, and I don't want you to like look back because I know how that all goes, but... And Jason mentioned it the the way you know the New Year's Eve thing and everything else. But is there is it just a case of bad luck? Do you just think that that was how it went? Because a lot of people have had ACLs. A lot of people, you know, I've I've had it twice, able to bounce back, and not things all worked itself out. Is there anything that you would have done differently throughout this whole process that maybe you wouldn't be in the pain and the situation that ended up where you really had a struggle for a couple of years to try to figure out what was going on? Don't listen to my coaches as much. Stop being a, a player's coach and uh, not be practicing full pads on a Thursday in week 17. Where Should have talked to Cliffy. Should have talked to Cliffy. And just, yeah, and just got on the, uh, the Cliffy Bob Lamborghini program um, probably uh, about a year or two sooner. But, again, uh, you know, I, I know I bring it up in the train room. That's something that I lightly talked about. I said I love practicing, but they just let, they enjoy throwing the guys out there. And, and I hope that I was maybe the final straw that no one else has to – they start really sh pulling back on practice for guys that they know are fine. So I think he's talking about his – when he initially tore his ACL, because I think it was in practice back in 2020, and he's, I guess he's saying that maybe he shouldn't have been practicing. And I feel like I understand that in hindsight. You know, obviously, if, if you knew who's going to tear his ACL in practice, you wouldn't have him practice. But at the same time, I feel like it's hard to – I mean, it's hard to know, know when someone's going to – have some kind of injury like that. So I don't know if you can really blame the coaches for, you know, wanting players to practice when they're healthy. I understand, you know, letting some veterans rest and guys who maybe don't need as much practice to let them rest, which I feel like the Packers do a lot. Um, but I guess Bossiari was seemingly, want, you know, hoping to 
you know, looking back that he hadn't practiced. But I think all in all, it was just an unfortunate situation. You can't always stop injuries, and they just happen from time to time. And for whatever reason, his knee injury was much worse, and he struggled to, to get back from it. And then here's a final clip I'll share with you guys here. If this is another opportunity for you to talk to Packers fans, what do you say to them about your time in Green Bay and what they meant to you because I know you meant a lot to them? Oh, you know, we – I mean, I had so much fun at the end of the day. We had great highs, also had some decent lows. But overall, I just want to say just thank you. I mean, we had a journey. I think that's all we, we can always appreciate. When we look back, we had fun together. You know, we were able to laugh. And I'm glad that what I could do for Green Bay for the last 11 years could bring joy to so many people, and I appreciate that. And for other people that – wanted to get, you know, some, some hate off their heart. I'm glad I could be that punching bag for you too. Regardless of what it was, I'm just glad I was something because that meant, that means I was something and, I, and I'm forever grateful for that. I will be coming back. I'll always have fun. I'll always be a good time. And Green Bay will always be a special place in my heart because he took in a 21 year old kid. So even though his final years in Green Bay probably didn't go as he had hoped, um, you know, he still had a solid career here in Green Bay. He was one of the more impactful players over the past 10 years in Green Bay and, you know, I wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully he can, you know, get back to full strength and, and be able to play in, in this upcoming season. But that's all I have for this video. If you want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.